Well, howdy there folks, this is your host, Tiny Jester. Welcome back to Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit. As you can see here, we got a lot to talk about here because we're going to be doing another scenario here. And of course, that scenario is S1488 at Zon, as you can tell by our title here. But we're going to be doing something I think is going to be rather interesting to a lot of people out there. Hopefully, anyways, I'm hoping that you guys find this interesting. Uh, if you watched our last episodes on the Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit and our scenario, A Long Way to Go, S11, from Starter Kit number two, it was a great time and really enjoyed our play, had lots of good comments and uh, lots of players interested in it, and uh, hopefully um, those from not familiar with Starter Kit or Advanced Squad Leader, hopefully you enjoyed it and... Uh, you know, leave a thought and comment if you did. And uh, what I've decided to do was, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of players out there that have played the starter kit. They look at the advanced rules for um, advanced squad leader and they decide, oh, that's just too much. It's way too much for me. I don't think I want to take the plunge. So what I've decided to do is take our next scenario. What we're going to do is we're going to add in several of the advanced squad leader rules to it. So we're going to have advanced squad leader starter kit enhanced SHCB edition. So the SHCB is actually the rules we're going to be incorporating. So we're going to be using starter kit rules, full starter kit rules, and then we're going to implement uh, the uh, SHCB rules in. And what are the SHCB rules? Well, glad you asked. So S stands for snipers. So we're going to add in snipers into the scenario. I think this is going to balance out because both sides will have access to snipers. Um, and so there won't be any balancing issues uh, this way with adding snipers. The H stands for heat of battle, so we're going to add in heat of battle as well. Again, both sides will be able to benefit from the heat of battle situation. So um, that is, uh, you know, a, a something I'm decided to add in that, you know, both sides will be equally get both uh, snipers and heat of battle. So that's the S and the H. The C stands for concealment. So we're actually going to be adding in some concealment, concealment counters and the concealment rules to the starter kit. So obviously this is going to give the defender uh, an advantage in that he'll be able to uh, use his concealment counters uh, and <clears throat> uh, kind of uh, have the attacker have a little bit rougher time uh, with this half firepower shooting at concealment targets and etc. So it'll kind of sway towards the defender in this scenario. And to kind of balance that out, I've decided to also include our B, which is bypass. So uh, infantry bypass movement, which is obviously going to be mostly for the attacker because he gonna, he's the one that's going to be doing most of the moving, the advancing, uh, you know, trying to get to his objectives and everything. So kind of, I'm hoping that concealment and bypass uh, kind of cancel one another out. Uh, the concealment obviously better for the defender, uh, although the attacker obviously will be able to get concealment as well. Uh, but since he'll be doing a lot of moving, moving it's going to obviously be better for the defender. And then uh, bypass movement, obviously better for the attacker, uh, he'll be able to get uh, farther with his units without having to CX them, which of course will cause him to take a plus one die roll modifier to his attacks. So, uh, you know, advantage to the attacker with the bypass movement. So hopefully these cancel out. And again, both of these uh, snipers and the heat of battle are for both sides. So hopefully it's going to keep things still pretty balanced. Uh, again, this is just a um, uh, this is just a uh, test. So hopefully we can uh, uh, 
see how these rules, you know, they could change the scenario completely. It could uh, give the attacker way too much advantage or the defender way too much advantage. Uh, I don't know that, but uh, we're going to try it out. So that way we can inject some of the full ASL rules into the starter kit rules. So let me know what you guys think uh, about this edition, the SHCB rules, and uh, see if it's a good idea. And uh, we're going to try it out and see, uh, but I'd be interested to hear everyone's thoughts and uh, suggestions, especially before we actually start the scenario. If you think uh, we need to do something to adjust it, be sure to leave your thoughts and comments below. Um, again, I read all my comments. I try to reply back to them. So, um, you know, feel free to let me know what your thoughts are on this. Uh, be interested to hear that. So... Without further ado, um, again, we're looking at uh, SHCB snipers, heat of battle, uh, concealment, and bypass movement. So let's take a look at our scenario really quickly here. It is over here on the wrong screen. That doesn't help much, does it now? All right, so we are actually, oops, let's zoom in. There we go. All right, so uh, obviously this is in Zon Holland, 17th September. 1944 uh, you can kind of read the mission objectives we're using half of the board here just a through p rows are available um, and so you know that's that victory conditions the american players wins immediately immediately upon exiting greater than or equal to seven victory points off the south edge um, which we're going to look at here in a minute it's only five and a half turns so americans will get to uh, Germans will set up first, then the Americans will move. Uh, and there's the uh, units there for the German player. And you can notice he does have a uh, ordnance. This is going to be an AA gun, two of them actually. And some of the rules that are now going to be incorporated, and this is actually in the starter kit rules, is the uh, hip setup of the guns uh, for the German player. And we're going to talk about that here when we look at the scenario and the uh, setup. Then, of course, here is the American. Uh, and uh, you'll see all these. Um, I'm kind of glossing over this pretty quickly because a lot of this stuff is built into the actual scenario. So special rules, none. And then, of course, our af aftermath there. So if we go into... Uh, uh, our scenario here. Let's actually go up to uh, about 120% usually works pretty good. We'll try 130. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> so, again, uh, five and a half turns. The uh, German player is going to set up first. Uh, victory points, full squads are worth two, half squads worth one. The minus two uh, single main counters worth three. Minus one single main counter is uh, two points. Other single main counters are one point. They got to get seven or more points off of any of these hexes down here. So the Americans are going to come in in two different groups. There's the uh, pink group over here on the uh, east side and the uh, green group that is coming in over on the west side. We're going to look at the Americans in the next video. And uh, right now what I've done is I've set myself up with the German player, and now I'm going to talk about what I'm thinking as the defensive-minded player for uh, <clears throat> this scenario and the Germans. We're going to talk a little bit about a setup and what I'm thinking strategy-wise, scenario-wise, uh, and then uh, obviously next video we're going to do the same thing with the Americans, and then after that we'll get into gameplay. But I want, uh, want everyone to have a say on what they think about this. So first things first, we did incorporate snipers into the scenario. So if I actually go to, uh, not the notes section, sorry, into the info section, uh, I basically set up snipers four and four for both sides. So even Steven, um, four and four. Let me know in the comments if you think I should adjust those, give one side an advantage or the other. Uh, lower the numbers or whatever. I think, uh, you know, uh, I was going to go with three and three, but I thought, well, since this is our first scenario with snipers, let's do four. That way uh, we might have a better chance at uh, 
maybe seeing some sniper results out there. <clears throat> All right, uh, so German player, uh, if we look at our scenario card again, here it is. Um, German player actually only has six full uh, squads and a half squad and only three leaders and a couple light machine guns. And we're going to talk about the uh, AA guns here in a minute. So he doesn't have a lot. He's going to be opposed by 11 full squads of Americans plus three really good leaders, a medium machine gun, and some bazookas. Uh, so quite a powerful force there uh, coming in. And uh, because we are playing with starter kit rules, except for the, uh, the rules specified in the, uh, the sniper or the heat of battle, the uh, concealment and the bypass, we're using regular uh, starter kit rules. Uh, so these elite units here, 747s, they will not uh, ELR at all. Uh, besides, they have an ER5 anyways, but uh, still, they won't ELR, so they're never going to drop in quality, which is one of the advantages right off the bat. Mir uh, the German player only has an ELR3, uh, so, and his units are uh, sevens and eights, so probably going to see some ELR situations come up for them, which is obviously not ideal. <clears throat> so we are... We are, uh, we are fighting a pretty solid force of Americans coming in. Uh, so the last scenario, a long way to go, the uh, German player was actually the attacker. And uh, in this scenario, the German player is going to be the defender. So let's talk a little bit about our situation we have. So we can set up two of these guns here. <clears throat> and we can set them up hip. And we'll be, basically what that means is... Uh, as we're setting our units up on the board, for those players that are not familiar with HIP, it stands for hidden in place. You don't actually put the counters in the board. What you're going to do is you're going to figure out where or where you're going to place this unit, and you're going to write down the location. So uh, let's just say I want to put this unit, uh, you know, in H5 here. And that's kind of a, well, let's just say, let's say E3, just for example. Uh, you know what, we'll say C4, and I'm going to talk about why. So, um, and then what I'm going to do is I want to determine uh, which way our gun is pointing. So I would say uh, C4, and it's going to be facing the C5, D4 hex side. So in this case, the gun will be pointing here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that in the note. And once I do that, then the unit's removed. So the American player does have no idea where these units are going to be. But there are some restrictions to this. You can do this um, to set up your unit, hip. You can do it anywhere. But uh, there are some rules associated with that, which we're going to look at right here. All right, when a gun loses its hip, um, uh, when a gun, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. each of the German AA guns not on a paved road, so there's our first restriction. They can't go on a paved road. They set up hipped, hidden in place. The German player needs to record a delayed note that gives the location in the covering arc of the gun. At set up, the hipped German AA and hipped crew counter should be placed on the board at the location with the correct covering arcs. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there's the information. Here's how we're going to lose our hip. When a gun loses its hip, the gun and crew are unhipped and the contents of the delayed note for the gun crew are revealed. A gun crew loses hip for any of the following reasons. Any actions performed by the gun or crew within line of sight of an enemy unit. Enemy fires at a hex with enough firepower to cause at least a pin task check. An enemy unit attempts to move into the location. Or if during an enemy movement phase, enemy unit is returned to the previous hex, blah, blah, blah. If a gun is set up in open or unpaved road, enemies within 16 hexes and the line of sight to the gun. Or if the gun is in grain or brush, enemies within 16 hexes at a higher elevation with line of sight to the gun. So what does all that mean? Well, let's take a look back over here uh, at our situation. So if you were just to say, okay, we're going to place the gun here in D5. And it's going to face his arc. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to blow these guys away as soon as they come in. 
The problem with that is this is actually a clear hex, as you can see. If I just mouse over, it's clear hex. So anytime the American moves any unit, let's just say this is American unit, as soon as he moves a unit in that it can see this hex, then all of a sudden I have to place this unit on the board. It's no longer hidden because they now see, oh, there's a gun over there. So, hey, watch out, guys. Uh, so that can be obviously a very, very bad thing. So um, if I was to, say, put it over here in, into the, uh, into the uh, grain over here, and I'm going to do, let's see, we're going to do counterclockwise. There we go. And maybe, um, you know, maybe this is where I put it. Now, there's restrictions in this scenario. we got to be below the uh, dotted line. But this is just an example. If you're playing another scenario and you put it in this terrain and the American player comes in and he moves here, that's fine because he can't actually see you because of all the, the grain and everything. But as soon as he goes up to another height and all this grain uh, is no longer a uh, hindrance to him, and boof, all of a sudden, you're going to have to, oh, oh, you got, yep, you can see my gun, so then you got to put the gun on there. So, the advantage of uh, setting up a gun is hipped is what you want to do is you want to put it in a spot where the American is, uh, again, going to, oh, you know, he's going to move a whole bunch of units, then all of a sudden you go, ah, stop, and I'm going to defensive fire on you, he's out in the open, you're going to take a good attack because he's moving out in the open and, uh, you know, he's not an assault moving. Uh, you, so you're surprising him. You're going to get a, hopefully a really good attack on him, do a whole bunch of damage, and uh, then you reveal your unit and say, oh, this is where he's at. So that's the advantage of a, a hip unit is the American player's never sure where it's going to be. But with that said, we have a situation on this map because, because as we talked about, uh, as long as he's out in uh, the open, as soon as an enemy unit comes within line of sight of it, it can see it, and we gotta tell the, we gotta show the enemy, oh, yep, this is where we put our gun. Or if we put it over here in J5, an American unit comes and moves into this space, and it can see it. Or you know, K7 or whatever the situation happens to be. And then I, oh, yep, now you can see my gun and it's no longer hidden. And so when it's not hidden, I don't get that extra attack. So the way to prevent that from happening is obviously put your gun in where it's not clear terrain, right? So let's look. What do we have that isn't clear terrain? The one thing that should be noted is there, uh, you can't set up your guns inside of buildings except for there are certain require certain restrictions that can um, but uh, the red on this counter it shows that this is a large AA gun and because it's a large gun large guns can't set up in buildings so all the building hexes are NA for us so we can't set up in any of the buildings because well we have a large gun. The second thing is because it's an AA gun, AA guns can't set up in buildings either. So there's two restrictions why we can't set up in a building. Uh, again, there are some rules. Again, check the uh, their starter kit rules on <clears throat> uh, setting up your guns inside of buildings. Uh, small guns and AT and AT and something, AT and uh, artillery guns that are not large, I think is the rule, um, just off the top of my head. So because it's an AA gun, can't set up in a building, and because it's large, can't set up a building. So none of the building hexes will work. So we can't, we can't hide our AA gun inside a building, which kind of sucks because there's a lot of building hexes on here. So that means that we have two, two things. We can either set it up out in the open, and as soon as the enemy sees us, we can't set it up on the paved road because of the rule here. Uh, uh, each of the German A guns not on a paved road can set up hip, so we can't put it on a paved road, and we can't put it in a building. So we can either put it in clear, or there are a few, and I mean a few, hexes that are... Woods, there's a wood hex here, there's a wood hex here, there are some orchard hexes here, 
there are some orchard hexes here there's one on our side of the map here again we can't go north of this blue line so we have to say south of that blue line there um, so there's one orchard hex here there's a couple on this hill there's a couple down here down here and there's a couple towards the back end here where the American player needs to get out so we have two of these we can secretly 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 record and say okay this is where they're at we write it down and then once a situation comes up and we say okay hold it we want to you know take a shot at you and reveal where our unit is we will show the enemy we will show our the other player and say this is where it was set up and this was uh its arc and everything checks out and then we get to do our attack if for some reason we had the wrong setup let's say for example you know we had we had put it as uh, like this and the American player uh, moved here and I said oh wait a minute I want to take a shot at it uh, that would be outside his covering arc and we would have to take the penalty for uh, rotating the turret which I'm sure we'll talk about when we get into the scenario so anyways uh, so there's only a few hexes that will actually give us a uh, hip. Um, the advantage of setting up in, say, a woods or the orchard is the American player can, you know, come into line of sight here. And we don't have to reveal. We don't have to tell them. Uh, let's actually go like that. Let's say this is uh, where we secretly recorded that we were going to position our unit. And this is the facing down this way. And this unit says, oh, okay, I'm going to, uh, you know, we don't have to tell them that's here because it's in the orchard. We got it hidden behind the bushes, so he, he can't see us. It's not automatic. If we positioned it in this hex, we would, you know, we would have to immediately reveal it when the American came in, in line of sight. So, uh, you know, we recorded this hex right here. We don't have to tell the American. The American says, okay, well, let's see, I'm going to move here. And then I can say, okay, stop. You know, put it on the map board, do our attack, you know, boom, boom, boom. Great advantage because he didn't know it was there. So, uh, obviously, orchards and a few wood hexes are going to allow us to get that surprise attack. Problem is, all of these orchards are up on the hill, so units that are down here, we can't see. We can't even see this unit right here if this unit was right here because to see anything that's not on the hill, you have to be at the edge of the hill. I call this the Grand Canyon effect. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, just uh, I've got some videos on uh, line of sight on my game channel here, but basically just a 10 second overview. You can't actually see down into the Grand Canyon until you actually walk up right next to it. So uh, that's that's the whole uh, premise behind being able to shoot uh, downhill, you know, from where you can see. So if this unit was here on top of the edge of the hill, he can see everything. Doo -doo -doo. But if he's back here, he's in this hex right here, or this hex, or this hex, he can't see down in the valley. He can't see any of this green stuff. None of it. Nowhere. So the only thing that this guy can shoot at is anything up here on top of the hill. Um, you know, same thing with this hex and this hex and this hex. Same thing with this hex, as a matter of fact. Um, and, uh, you know, so that kind of restricts where we can actually put the gun and do some, some good, uh, some good surprise attacks. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you, I've, I've got a couple hexes that I picked out and I'm just going to keep them secret. And you guys, uh, you know, as we play this scenario, we're going to be talking and I'm going to say, oh, yeah, don't forget, there's a couple uh, hidden guns. And I'm not going to review them uh, until the time arrives. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts about good locations for where we could set this up, uh, that would be awesome. But, you know, obviously protecting back here, you know, if we put both of our guns kind of back here, it can protect the uh, exit uh, and that does have obviously some advantages, uh, because we're in the woods, we can hopefully surprise attack them at 
the end of his thing. The problem is we're basically wasting all of this firepower. Uh, wasting all this firepower as he's, as the Americans are progressing, you know, from through the scenario as they're moving through the map board. All of our firepower is down here just waiting, not being utilized. So, um, you know, like I said, there are some advantages. Um, you know, if you put it down here in the little gully down here, uh, you know, we can set it up hip. And the only time the American player, you know, when the American player moves here, he can't see it, he can't see it there, he can't see it here, he can't see it here. But all of a sudden he, he moves here or whatever, then I would reveal it. And at that point I would be able to hopefully get some kind of attack on him. Um, so, you know, there are some little crevices next to the hill that we could possibly use. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, it's going to be a matter of we want to get a couple really good shots on them, do some damage, and slow all their firepower down from just advancing across the map, which would obviously be bad for us. So, um, as far as our setup here... Um, we don't have a lot of units, so I've kind of basically just taken our, 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 basically created a few groups. I've got one group kind of here, you know, I'm thinking the American player is going to have pretty quickly going to be able to get into some pretty, pretty good terrain bonuses. There are a lot of plus three stone buildings that they're going to be able to utilize. Uh, and there's not much I can do to prevent that. Uh, obviously, we could, you know, put unit up here in this hex, maybe, um, you know, to kind of force him over in this way. You know, if he comes out this way, we can defensive fire. But if we do, we lose our concealment. Plus, so we're going to be shooting through the crops, which is going to be a penalty that way. So, um, you know, there's some advantages and disadvantages. So basically I got a group kind of in the middle here to kind of slow him down, make him think about where he's going. Uh, then I'm, I think most of the fighting is going to be over here because the green, yeah, the green forces, there are a lot more of the green forces than there are of the pink ones. There's four of the full squads of the pink and there's, uh, what do we have here, a seven in the green. So big fight over here probably, you know, between building the buildings. And uh, we don't have a lot of firepower to actually resist it. Thing is, all this terrain over here is all paved. So we can't obviously set up our guns in the paved. We can't set them up in the buildings. So kind of restricted. Can't get a lot of uh, help with that, um, with that gun over there. And the other thing to keep in mind is if our gun was, say, here, uh, even if it wasn't in the terrain, but we had it up here on the side and maybe facing the, uh, you know, maybe over here to help protect these buildings, there's a lot of blind hexes created um, by these buildings here. And I uh, can't see behind them. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see where we can actually utilize these 88s uh, to their full advantage. So hopefully that gives you kind of a good overview of the German side. We're going to obviously bring another video here, talk about the Americans, what they have to see. But being able to obviously surprise the, uh, the American player now with our hipped, uh, with our hipped units, and our concealment counters. Hopefully, uh, he won't know where to go and what to deal with. Uh, hopefully, um, at the start of the scenario, maybe that'll slow him down enough where five and a half turns will not give him enough time to actually get enough points off the map. But we shall see. My other thought is the Germans is I've got a, a group back here. It's kind of a reserve. So if this side starts to fall, if he pushes heavy on this side, or we get unlucky and a couple of these units break and they don't rally or whatever, we could uh, you know, bring these units over this way. Same thing if these units over here, 
if he brings too much firepower and these units start breaking, he starts taking this territory too quickly, we could bring these guys over in this general direction as well. So it looks like it's going to be a really interesting scenario. Love to hear you guys' suggestions on not only our <clears throat> um, SHCB rules that we're implementing into the starter kit, but also the uh, actual thought of the uh, gun placements and also what you think of our setup. Again, I don't want to kind of, uh, for loose players who don't want to know, I'm trying to just not show where everything is at this point. We'll get to that when we actually get into this scenario because the American's going to move first. And I don't want to kind of, uh, especially when we talk about the American setup here, I don't want to kind of talk about exactly what's in every space here yet. Um, we'll do that uh, when the game starts. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.